Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Hi Anne. Five on YouTube and six on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. We have 11 people tuning in. I see some folks commenting in the chat. We're just going to get started at around 3.34, 3.35. People some time to hop on. Ooh. Hi, Karen. Oh, Hi, my Susan. God. That's my mom. Oh, that is my mom. Oh, hi, mom. <laughs> really hi, Raina. <laughs> how are you guys today? Before we yeah. get started, yeah, how are you feeling? Hey, everybody. I'm super excited. I'm so Me excited. Too. Me too. I'm excited to be on here with all three of you today and have so many 13 people joining us virtually. That's so nice. It's okay, Jocelyn. Jocelyn popped on everybody to say hello. <laughs> I don't know who that person is. It says, good afternoon, ladies. Yeah. So, folks, um, if you're just tuning in, um, in order for us to be able to see your name, uh, there's a link above the video if you're tuning in from Facebook to grant StreamYard permission. But if you don't want to do that, that's okay, too. Um, we'll still Hi, see your Karen. comments. It'll just be by Facebook user. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, the mysterious Facebook users. Oh, mm. Oh, Shell, I think it's your sister. Oh, probably. <laughs> we'll just give it about two more minutes, folks. Yeah, two more minutes. I'm getting warm. The sun is shining in through this window, and it's like very, <laughs> I feel like it's like very warm. I'm good. Where I'm at. Yeah? Yeah, it's nice and cool. Yeah. What about you, Ed? Are you in a. I'm here in my kitchen. <laughs> the fans blowing on me. I'm good. I'm good. good. <laughs> Nadine, it's Nadine Paris. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. My sister. Hi, sister. <laughs> All right. Let's give it about one more minute. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I think we have 15 folks joining us now, guys. Welcome, everyone. Super exciting. Yeah. All right. Are you guys good to start? Yeah. Good to get the show on the road? OK. Let's get this party started. Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to Connecting Across the Arts Stories on Aging and Intergenerational Connection. My name is Jenna and I'm a part of the Nova Scotia Network for Social Change, um, a network for people working on issues about aging well and population aging with a diversity and equity lens. And I also work with the NS GovLab team and these amazing folks that you see on the screen here with me today. So joining me today, we have Angie Breton, my co-host for the day. And we also have um, a very special guest who you normally see up here with me moderating, Shelly Fashion, our community impact coordinator with the Nova Scotia Network for Social Change. So please give her a warm welcome. Um, today, she's actually joining us as the... For those of you who know, know Shelly, Shelly wears very many different hats, and today she's our special guest and joining us as the creator of the short that you'll be seeing today. We also get to work with um, Raina, Jocelyn, Mo, Deb, um, as a part of our amazing team, and you'll probably see them hopping in and out of the chat, so feel free to say hello to them in the chat. Um, just a few housekeeping things before we get started. If you're joining us from Facebook, as I said earlier, um, in order for us to be able to see uh, your photo and name when you submit a comment, you have to go to the link that's above the video and grant access. If you're joining us from YouTube, on your right hand side, you should see a chat bar. And if you log into your Google account, you'll be able to comment and post questions and comments for Shelly during the Q&A later today. And now I will pass it over to you, And Thanks, Jenna. So uh, we'd like to acknowledge today that we're existing on the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people who've lived on this land for thousands of years. 
We wish to acknowledge that we're all treaty people according to the Peace and Friendship Treaty signed between 1725 and 1779. These treaties are formal agreements and those of us who are settlers on this land share responsibility to be familiar with them. We also wish to acknowledge the African Nova Scotian ancestors who've been situated on this land for over 400 years. They came as slaves, black loyalists, maroons, freed women and men and are one of the founding cultures in Nova Scotia. The purpose of the Connecting Across the Arts series is to highlight diverse voices, experiences of aging and intergenerational connection. And we're using the arts as a form of communication that allows us to open up to different perspectives, gives us the opportunity to look outside ourselves and explore and experience other ways of living, thinking and doing. While we're using technology today to capture and share stories, storytelling itself as an ancient art form, and it's been used to pass knowledge and understandings down through generations. So the film we're screening today in season is a short glimpse into a memorable matriarch, Sarah Bundy, lovingly known as Aunt Sadie. Mrs. Bundy was born and raised on Riley Road, named after her ancestors in the black community of Cherrybrook. In this short documentary, she talks about her daily life and the beauty of living and working in season. So now I will stop talking and here is in season. In Season is a story about a way of life born of survival. We came to this province in many ways and at many times. We came as slaves, maroons, who built the citadel, British loyalists, and through the Underground Railroad. The common thread through all of these journeys of the African descendants was a society built on exclusion and racism. We were left alone, but not alone. We drew strength from our commonalities and communities to fend for ourselves and raise our families from the land. We made a living from whatever was in season. I'm right now I'm at the Dartmouth waterfront uh, at the farmer's market. <laughs> Cooking chicken wings, sausages, fish, and whatever else I can cook. But she's down here bright and early, too early for me. Saturday morning she gets there around 4.30. Each Saturday morning you will find me at the market. We have to be there early before the customers come to set up our tables. I love the market and I love meeting people there and uh, I have my customers who won't buy from anyone else but me. and. I'm really, really happy there. This Saturday is Thanksgiving, and I'm going to make 30 pumpkin pies like I do every year to sell at the market. Well, I started market at a very early age. My Aunt Ethel Raleigh used to take me with her to help her sell eggs and pussy willows, whatever she had. For the past few years, Every place is so growing up now, it's really hard to get blueberries. But if we, we go, we travel until we can find, and someone takes me now uh, to get blueberries. And most time I find a, a big patch of blueberries, if I can find them, and I sit down and pick them, because I don't bend over as much as I do the way I used to. So I just sit down and pick them until I get a box full. Then I come home and clean them and prepare them for market. And you see, on Friday night, I stay up very late. After I finish baking and packing them and everything, sometimes it's 2 o'clock in the morning. But I just sit up and I do it. Because people buy with their eyes, and everything has to be, you know, perfect almost. The blueberries can't have any leaves in them. and and. When you do your cake, pies and cakes, they have to be in, you know, in the plastic bag so, you know, that they look nice and clean and everything, and it's a joy. The market has changed a lot. Uh, back years ago, most times we would stand out in the cold, 
But now the markets are so modern and everything. It's a lot of, it's comfort at the market now, but I remember going with my aunt and standing outside selling, and we'd be, we'd be so, we would be so cold. I grew up on Raleigh Road, and Raleigh Road was named after my great-grandfather. And my great-grandfather came over from Spain on a slave ship. My father's house, this was all woods, but my father cleared this land and built his house here, where I am now. Oh, my mother was the daughter of William Raleigh the son of Fred Raleigh, who built the first house. My mo mother died at, uh, at the age of 48, and my father raised his three children. He taught us at a very early age who to have faith in, and he said we could conquer anything if we just had faith and trust in God. They say I'm famous for my apple pies. I never ever bring anything back home, my bacon. I always sell all of it. And so over the years, I've been going to market, and, and I'll continue to do so. Soon we'll be getting ready for Christmas now, and I'll be making my wreath, holly berries, and everything. Also Christmas baking, Christmas cakes, shortbreads, and everything like that. I sell pussy willows, mayflowers, uh, blueberries, whatever's in season, I sell at the market. Our four parents who started over at the Halifax market, I know my uncle and I used to go, it's our tradition, it's our heritage, and I don't think we'll ever stop going. There'll be always someone going to the market as long as there is a farmer's market. And I know I won't stop until I can't go anymore. I said he's been down here so many years, 30, 40, 50, I don't know, a long time. Long, long time. She's 87. I think she built the first market. <laughs> She's quite an aunt, though. She is. I love her to death. Aunt Sarah Bundy and the women of her time were the aunts of my community of Cherry Brook Lake Loom. It didn't matter whether we were related. What mattered was that they watched over all the children in my community with time patience, and love. In my soul, in my soul, in my soul, in my soul, I know we will come through. Oh, in my soul, in my soul, in my soul, in my soul, in my soul. So loud we heard it. In a whistle and be silence, pastors that hold the truth. Though in the TV holds a soul, and I know we will come through. Holy my soul, in my soul, holy my soul, in my soul, holy my soul.
Got to unmute myself. Sorry. Wow, Shelly, I uh, I'm over here. I'm giving you some virtual applause. I, that was amazing. Thank you so much for allowing us to screen that and for joining us today. And yeah, thank you. You're so welcome. Glad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, folks, we are now going to have a question and answer with Shell. So, if you have any questions or comments about the film feel free to drop them in the chat and we will put them up here on the screen for Shelly. Um, but Shell, I'm gonna start us off because I have a question for you. Okay. Um, I think, I don't know, I've seen this film a couple of times now because I got to see it at the Emerging Lens Film Festival and I've also watched it a couple of times to make sure everything ran smoothly today. <laughs> And every time I watch it, I'm reminded of the beauty um, and the importance of sharing what may seem like ordinary daily stories. And I'm just curious what your thoughts are on that and about sharing daily stories and if it's important to you and what really inspired, I guess, two questions, what really inspired you to focus on this for your film? Well, I, I think I just, wanted to capture, you know, th there's a lot of women like my Aunt Sadie who's passed, you know, in our community, who, you know, they're so strong and they're so important to, they're just the glue, you know? And so I only was able to capture a little bit of her story, but you know, there's so many that have exceptional stories. She was, uh, also someone, you know, um, that was a mentor in the community. You know, she was my CGIT teacher, which meant Canadian girls in training. <laughs> so, you know, we had to wear those uniforms. And With the sash. <laughs> and oh, yeah. Crafts and stuff. And um, so, you know, I always looked up to her. And so um, I thought, you know, so... And, and right now it seems to be so, um, how can I say, uh, on my mind so much because so many of wonderful matriarchs are, are dying. Um, my Aunt May Shepherd and, uh, you know, Mrs. Um, Margaret Diggs, she just passed away. I mean, these are women that are heroes. They really are you know, the keepers of the culture, I call them. And um, I, you know, I hope I can capture more stories about them. So that's what inspires me, really. You know, them. It's interesting, because you're keeping the culture now. <laughs> I, I'm curious, I'm curious how challenging it was for you to decide what to include in the film. Like, I where it's a short documentary, do you think that it would, it, it's more challenging to make a short film than like a longer film? Did you, was it, was, was that something you had to really um, think about? Like how, how, what was that process like for you? Oh, it was chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> Because you have hours and hours. I mean, each shot, each scene is hours and hours and hours of film. Mm -hmm. And so out of each one of those hours, you might get one minute, you know. So it is quite a, a daunting process. And I thought I was going to go insane by the end of it. <laughs> yeah, so. Did, but Tom, did, mm -hmm. well, I was just gonna say, like, did that affect you emotionally, like having to strip pieces of the story to fit into like a smaller film space? Um, no, it's just part of the process. It's just what has to happen. You have to have these reams and reams and reams, and then you have to get the real key ingredients out of it. Mm -hmm. if you know what I mean? So, yeah, the plums, and uh, so that—that's kind of 
how it's done. There's no other way. <laughs> oh. You got some comments, Shell. We have a few folks putting some comments. We got, um, what a delicious film, amazing. So great to hear these stories. Lovely Shelly, beautiful documentary. Oh. Um, we also have someone asking if they can see this video online anywhere. So it will be up in the Nova Scotia Network for Social Change member space and also mm -hmm. on NS Gov Lab's YouTube page, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Karen Bradley uh, said, I love the way you highlighted tiny moments like her hands and the cat. The story is in these small views. In these small mm. views, me too, Shell. I um, when we were creating the poster, it was we were trying to think of an image to capture, and I think that was the one that we landed on because I think your film does such a good job in highlighting the small, the small moments that sometimes get overlooked. And um, she, uh, you know, she, um, we we were I was going out to film her doing her wreaths because that's one of the things that she made a living out of was the, the Christmas wreaths yeah. and taking them to market and making them. She knew, really knew how to make them. So I get out there, I'd say he's dressed up in her finest with her long earrings, nice wig and, and makeup. I said, Aunt Sadie, you're supposed to be making wreaths. I'm looking like a glamour book. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, that did not deter her. She just kept going with what she had on. <laughs> you know, back in the day, if you are going to be in public, you had to look your very best, you know. So, <laughs> yes, no pajama pants back in those days. <laughs> <laughs> no pajama pants. No pajama pants. <laughs> Shelly, when did you start making films? Like, when did you when did you get into this? It, well, it was I think it was twenty ten. I think it was twenty ten or twenty eleven. So I just saw that uh, the Center for Art Tapes had this scholarship, um, so you could make your own film. And um, so I put in my proposal. I thought they're not going to pay any attention to me. Well, don't you know I got approved? <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. So uh, I, um, you know, I decided I would tell her story. And um, like I said, there's so many incredible women in the community that I, I mean, I could keep going with this forever, mm -hmm. really. You could. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I, I mean, it's a one person kind of thing. You do everything kind of yourself, you're filming and all like that. And then you ask your friends and family to help. Like my granddaughter, she was I uh, Sadie when she was young. <laughs> and uh, Nadine, my sister was on Sadie when she was picking <laughs> the plums. <laughs> So, so you, you go to whoever will help you. Mm -hmm. uh, Tara was a was help to me. She helped me edit, and Martha Stigman, who was in Montreal, she's um she was my mentor. So you know, I had some support and everything. So I was lucky. So folks, if you have any other questions for Shell, feel free to drop them in the chat. We have people asking Shell when the next one is. Um, stay tuned. Keep an eye on our email and our um, email and our social media channels. And yes, this will be available on our, not our Facebook page, but our Nova Scotia Network for Social Change uh, member space group. So make sure to join. Any other oh, questions? Yeah. I want to know if you have advice for anybody who wants to do something like this. Anyone who maybe has thought about making a documentary or getting into this pro kind of a project, but hasn't. <laughs> of go, any go do it. There is no right. There is no wrong. You're learning the whole time. You know, I had to learn 
how to hold a camera or, or work with a camera and the mic and the lighting, you know, you're learning the whole time. So don't even think about the finished product. Think about all that, all these things you, that you're learning. And like I said, you're involving your community in a lot of ways. It, it, it's a win-win situation, no matter what you produce. You know, you know what I think of mine. It's like, oh, it's only nine minutes. Oh, it's really nothing. You know, <laughs> so, but to other people, it's something, you know. It, yep. You know, so, um, you know, if you can get your message across and, you know, you, you have a story you want to tell, you know, there's a way of doing that. I like that, Shell. Like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But I was just saying, yeah. it reminds me. It's like it's bringing me back because it's. I feel like that's something you're always telling me. It's like it's a learning journey, and like if you have an interest in it, you try, and you'll learn along the way. And that's the only way to get into those things. Uh, we have a couple questions in the chat, Shell. I'm gonna ask them to you. So I'm gonna add on to one actually because it just made me think of something mm -hmm. else. Um, when is the next doc? When is the next documentary you might? you might make that's from Jocelyn are you inspired to tell any particular story next and I'm going to add on to that and ask you is there any other forms I know we talk about arts as a way of telling stories and I'm curious if there's, is there any other forms of art that you would like to explore to tell stories later on in the future maybe or are you sticking to film I would stick to film you know you know I I like to sing but I'm no singer like sing singer <laughs> you know what I mean I'm not going to drop a CD, <laughs> but I do like singing in the choir. But um, and I do like the I do love poetry, and um, but I'm no poet, so I think the only <laughs> medium I have is film. <laughs> is there any particular story? Do you have anything in mind that you would like to try out next? Oh, I think I would probably do the same. Yeah. Tell stories from the community, you know. That's most important to me because, like I said, you know, the culture is kind of, well, it was never really recognized. And so to me, it's very important to recognize the black culture. So that's kind of my thread. <laughs> I'm excited, Shell, to see what you make next. I'm, uh, I'll be waiting. Oh, well, I'll get rid of some of the stuff I'm always doing. <laughs> I might find some time. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I like I too many some... things. Oh, sorry, I'm cutting everybody off today. <laughs> I know, Shell, it's hard to like, cut down on the things when you... Where, when you wear so many hats, it's hard sometimes, I think, yeah, to prioritize, like not prioritize, but do all the things that you care about. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess we have one last question to end off before we wrap okay. up. So actually, I'll read the first comment first. This was a wonderful film, and it's so important to capture these stories to keep the culture alive and honor these strong and capable women. I am inspired. Oh. Uh, that was from Susan. And then we have one last question from Jocelyn, and what that says would you okay. say, share anything in particular about how these types of stories can help us in our social work and work for social change? Well, I think tell, the telling of the stories, you know, it, we just learn so much more about, about people's lives. And it just helps to move us forward in terms of how we even approach things, how we can appreciate things and show respect for different things. You know, how we move is more is often more important than where we get to, you know? So, yeah, so that's really part of it, a big part of it. So, I mean, these, these stories are so important because you know, they, they are they are the foundation. We stand on all of these women's shoulders. 
And it's something that we need to recognize as we move forward. So that's me. <laughs> Absolutely. Tara said congratulations to Polly. Oh, thanks. And thank you for all your help. <laughs> Well, everybody, uh, that's a wrap. So thank you so much for coming. And thank you, Shelly, for agreeing to come on and allowing us to share this. So. Oh, you're so welcome. It's been fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was special. I'm really glad that you came. Yeah, thanks so much, Shelly. And I'm so glad that everybody came and checked it out, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. And thanks, thanks. Thanks, too, for letting us keep it online so that more people can watch it. Oh, they sure can. Yeah, anytime. It's time for me to do something new. <laughs> and we'll be all watching to see when, okay. when we'll see it when it comes out. And so, right, folks, and me and you. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I was, I was just going to say, you got me to help you now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. Keep an eye on our social media and your email uh, so you can hop on the next time that we are on here. And thank you for tuning in for connecting through the arts. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>